Hello, mortals. I'm the booktube goddess, the number one drag queen booktuber on YouTube. Now, I've been doing this little series called Reacting to Popular Booktubers. Sometimes they'll retweet. Sometimes they'll comment under my video. Sometimes not. It's kind of strange which ones do and which ones don't. The biggest YouTuber I've covered is probably Dominic Noble, and he was very gracious. He engaged with me, he retweeted my video, he commented under my video. So it just goes to show it doesn't really matter who's big or who's small who actually notices you. <laughs> so as I asked you guys in all my videos, who should I react to next? Someone said, well, why not me? And that was Eric from Break Even Books. And I thought, why not? I love Eric from Break Even Books. He has a very casual, very friendly Canadian personality. And he has a lot of interesting videos. And I've certainly participated in his readathons as well as book tags. And he just got monetized and he's growing very fast. So I would like to know how he did it. What is Eric's secret sauce? Okay, looking at Eric's homepage, he has 2.6k subscribers. Like I said, he just got monetized. Let's take a look at his history. Let's go back, starting from his oldest. Wait a minute. He only started a year ago. Why did I think that he's been on booktube several years? And gosh, he's only been on. That's like how long I've been on and I'm not monetized. And looking at his old videos, he was breaking 100 views every video from the start. Almost 200, 187. Yeah, I'm feeling really good about myself now. Really good. Okay, Eric, what is your secret? So let's just jump in and look at his first video. He looks younger there. Really, he's only been on a year. Well, maybe because now he has a little mustache. He tries to have a little mustache. So <laughs> let's take a look. I'm Eric. Uh, I run Break Even Books blog. Um, we have a lot of reviews to go through, and so we decided that we would do a book tube. So this is us starting our book tube. This is our first video. Um, we get a lot of reviews sent to us from authors. Is that the royal we? We read them and then we Is do Eric our a queen? take on the book and then we will post it. Uh, we have quite a few that go out throughout the week. And there's also two external reviewers that I have. One's Sarah and the other one's Chris. They help me out tremendously with reading the books. The bookshelf behind me actually is where I have a lot of books that have been submitted by authors. So I'm, I have quite a big pile of books to read but I thought that I would do a booktube and start. Okay, real quick. Um, he was actually, I'm assuming from this video, a known book blogger. So that's probably why he got such a fast start on booktube because he already had a built-in audience. And I got, he looks young without any uh, caterpillars on his face. <laughs> reviewing the books on videos as well. Uh, a little backstory on the blog. I've been running it for about a year and a half now. Okay, uh, a year and a half. It all started with a friend of mine, her name's Kylie. She just decided to tell me one day, cause I talked to her about books a lot. Well, I talked to everybody about books a lot. And she said, hey, you should start a blog. And I didn't really think anything of it. But then one day I was like, you know what? That's a great idea. And I started a blog and here I am now starting a book too. We don't just do reviews, we also do book highlights, we take part in book blog tours, we do author interviews, we also host... He had no idea about book tags at this point. <laughs> I bet Eric didn't realize uh, what types of videos he's actually going to end up doing, but I like that he thinks he's going to be doing book reviews and highlights and that type of thing. <laughs> Lots of giveaways. I recently did wow. a giant book haul at Chapters and bought about 60 books. So we're going to have quite a few giveaways going on. I'm going to try and do them weekly. Right now there's one online and I'll link to that as well. 
And it's not always just books that we give away. We also give away bookish items like bookmarks, uh, book-related stickers, um, stuff like that. If you have any books that you really like and I potentially already read, how would I know uh, link them in the comments if you potentially read them? I can give you my thoughts <laughs> on them. I can't guarantee that I will read any new books because of our large amount of reviews we already need to get through but I will do my best. I'm going to put the links in the description for you guys to check them out. I'll also put our links to our social channels so you can see those. Thanks for watching, guys. Okay, so that was his first video. I'll have a link to the whole video below. As before, I don't usually post the entire, this was a short one, but most videos I'll cut up and if you want to see the full ones of what I'm reacting to, I'll put them down below. But it's quite obvious that this is an outgrowth of his book blog. So like I said, that made, gave him a built-in audience. And I thought it was kind of cute of the types of videos he thought he would be doing. <laughs> but we all change. I thought that too. I thought, oh, oh, I'll just be doing book reviews and maybe retro book reviews because I know a lot of old books. But um, not so much. Okay, so um, I, let's not do the newbie tag. I do newbie tags for everyone. Let's just skip to maybe... It's only been on for a year. I'm, I'm just freaked out by that. Oh, look at how his thumbnails have changed over time. That's interesting. Let's look at his rapid fire book tag, because that's just when his looks like his thumbnails were getting better. And I remember doing this tag and it was a lot of fun, especially if you try to do it fast. But Eric's not fast, so. <laughs> fire book look how tag. wholesome he looks. And he's always smiling. I was tagged to do this by Dominic from Reading Fandom. I'll put his uh, channel in the description below so you can go check him out. Yeah, I'm just gonna jump right into it because I think this one's supposed to be one of those quick ones where you just kind of like hammer out the questions. And, and you got a haircut. Like, first thing that comes to mind, so I'm gonna read them off and here we go. First one and is first video is hair is really physical poofy. copy. And for me, okay, go, I'm gonna go. choose physical copy. Um, I do like eBooks for their convenience during traveling, but I just can't overcome my love for holding a physical book in my hand and being able to like it's sift through the pages. The also the smell of physical books. I love the books. I love the smell of books. Next is paperback or hardback. And for me, I like paperback because I like to read while I'm doing other things. Me too. So with the paperback, I can easily hold it while I'm brushing my teeth and it won't like weigh down my hand or <laughs> fall out of my hand because they're usually <laughs> floppy. I can hold it while I'm cooking something on the stove as well with paperback. I'm also someone that if I'm reading a hard Okay, comment below if you read while you brush your teeth and cook. <laughs> I thought he was going to say I like the convenience because it's easy to travel with. You can read it on the bus and the train. It sticks in your pocket. I think he's like a, like a little child with a pacifier or, or a little teddy bear. He just can't go anywhere without a book and he always has to look at it. That's kind of funny because that's what I see kids. Well, by kids, I mean... <laughs> teenagers and people in their 20s do with their phones. They just can't go anywhere without them. They're constantly looking at them, you know, whether they're in the bathroom or wherever, they, they always have their phones. But not Eric. He has a book. <laughs> back, I don't take off the, the dust jacket, and this, this bothers Marcus quite a bit. <laughs> but I don't know. I just like having the dust jacket on there, so when I close the book, it's like a nice picture to look at. Although some hardbacks do have really intricate designs underneath the dust jacket, so it's always worth checking. You can also like, use what's dust jacket as a bookmark if, cool, if you don't have a bookmark. I still prefer paperback overall. Look who decided to creep on Aww. by while I was Aww. recording the video. So, a little pause for Uno. Say hi. Oh, it wants to go down again. Hey, Eric, you got to do my he meowing about by books. As he was Tag. chasing his toy. Boy, so I kind of picked him up right in the middle of that. So, he's very energetic right now and running around the room, so... If you hear anything, it's Uno, chasing toys. Online or in-store book shopping. And this is tough because I like the conveniency of online, because you can just put in a shopping cart, click and go, and then it... I also really like getting mail, because it's exciting. <laughs> so I like that. 
but I think okay. I'm gonna have to choose in-store shopping for this one because it's just the best feeling walking into a store filled with books and you just like it's so open to possibilities you can just go anywhere grab a book and you can go to like different sections of the store like when I go to chapters I have a routine I go to a certain bargain area first that has really good sometimes amazing books for like eight bucks then I go to the teen section check out the books there then I go from there over to the graphic novel section and then the fantasy sections right beside that and then the sci-fi sections right beside that so I do that and then I will check now, I find that's kind of unusual where the science fiction is separated from the fantasy. Most bookstores all gone to, they're combined. But um, I do kind of miss browsing in bookstores because I haven't found a way to browse books like I used to in bookstores, whether it's Goodreads or Amazon or whatever. It's, um, it's a different experience when you're physically going through and looking at covers and spines and titles and checking out the authors, but check out the travel section from time to time but i haven't gone there in a while mainly because i don't have enough money to go on any trips <laughs> but yeah i kind of have a routine every time i go so yeah i like in-store book shopping better trilogies or series uh i would have to choose trilogies because yeah. i think that some things can get a little overdone and they yeah. keep taking it further than it needs to like a lot of things can be wrapped up in a trilogy and a trilogy is a lot more manageable to get through compared to a series with like six to eight books. So yeah, I just have to say trilogies for this one. Heroes or villains? And obviously I'm gonna choose villains because villains are so much <laughs> fun. Um, like heroes are great too, and you always wanna root for the heroes, but I just, I personally love learning more about a villain's backstory than a hero's backstory. So. Yeah, I'm evil, what can I say? A book you want everyone to read? Well, I feel mm. like everyone's gonna know that I want them to read Red Rising by Red Pierce Rising. Brown, obviously. He talks he about Red Rising the best. all the also, time. Also, I just started a new job this week, and when I was out with the employees at an escape room event, one of them asked me if I liked Red Rising. And I was like, wow, are you freaking kidding me? It's my favorite book. <laughs> So I feel like my new job is, uh, it's going to be good. Okay, so let's jump ahead to one of his more recent books. We should do an evolution of his hairstyling. <laughs> um, oh, I was on this uh, panel with him. See, I think I've seen these more recent book tags. So I don't think I saw his October wrap-up. Maybe I did. I don't remember it. But it's uh, one of his more recent book tags, so you can see the thumbnails better, the video quality looks better, there's a uh, chocolate milk stain on his upper lip, <laughs> and he has that personality where you really just want to be his friend. And I don't know if that's just because he's Canadian, or because he's actually a nice guy. Or it could be both. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Eric and I like to read, and today we're going to be doing my October so wrap-up. Look at that intro. I like that. Oops. So in the month I of October, redo my I intro. ended up reading a total of seven books. A lot of them were not more thrillers. Than me. I wanted to read thrillers and I wanted to have a very like thrilling month, but unfortunately a lot of the books didn't really scare me that much and that's kind of a bummer. So I'm still on the lookout. For now are thrillers actually scary books? Because I don't equate thriller with horror. I, I think of thrillers as just fast paced action adventure stories that aren't necessarily um, have any supernatural element. Uh, they could be scary, but I don't know. Am I wrong? Let me know in the comments. Or some good thrillers, because I really just want to be creeped out. That's just, it's just what I'm looking for. I'm also very excited for the Reindeer Readathon, which is coming up soon. My next video actually will be an announcement for it, so stay tuned for that. But anyways, let's get into the books that I read in October. So the first book I read was Mexican Gothic, and I will show it here because mm -hmm. I read this book via audiobook. Um, I listened to it while we were traveling home for Thanksgiving weekend and when we were traveling back. 
So it was the perfect time to listen to a book. And I actually did this as a group book for the Halloween bookish ball that we had. And we did a live discussion on the book horror? there. So I won't go too much into depth on it. But essentially, I gave this book a low three a rating because the book, I don't think translates very well to audio. I... In my personal opinion, I think that the book could have used more people on the cast for the audiobook. I think that would have given it a little bit more like oomph and mm. made it a better book. Just because the narrator of the audiobook, every time they did a man's voice, they did the same kind of sounding man's voice. And there are multiple men cast in this book as characters. That's just a bad a lot narrator. Of time, I had a hard time differentiating which man was speaking because they all sounded similar to me so i don't know this is also only the second or third audiobook that i've ever listened to so that could yeah. also be it but the narrators I just think make that a huge difference from more people as voice casting i usually don't like that book. the one thing i did note about the book is that it's a very atmospheric book and the author goes into lots of description with her adjectives which at times oh. i found kind of funny because she was using very like interesting adjectives for describing like outdoor nature scenes and i thought i thought that was interesting at least um the main character was okay i did find that the book took a long time to actually like pick up the pace and then when it did pick up the pace the ending wasn't quite satisfying enough for me to rate it higher i just think that it could have went in so many other directions where it would have been a lot like scarier or creepier than it was that being said it still was an interesting twist i'm not going to tell you anything about that but it was like it wasn't exactly where i expected it to go and it was it was interesting but it still wasn't like scary i guess i had built this book up to think that it was going to be a very scary book well, sure i mean it's called american gothic mexican gothic and mexican like gothic. the front cover is like a girl holding flowers and just, i don't know it just looks the whole front cover of the book is a very creepy vibe but it just didn't live up to the expectations I had given it in my head. So yeah, unfortunately it's just a low three for this one. Then I did a buddy read of Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. Uh, I did this buddy read with Amanda and her channel is Her oh. Pacific Northwest <laughs> Washington Life. So we buddy read this, I think at the like very beginning of October. I think it turned this career. This is something It was different. decent. Like I gave this book a 3.5 out of five. It was okay. I just found that, like, you already kind Have of. Have you ever heard of damning with faint praise? Because <laughs> the beginning of the book tells you that a child is murdered, and the whole book is kind of like giving you the missing pieces as to how that child was murdered. So, like, the ending isn't exactly as it wasn't exactly as satisfying as I was. If you want a creepy book, check out the Wasp. There were definitely some chilling Ian moments Banks. in this book that, like, I would not want to be in those situations. Um, so I did like that, that added to this book and like bumped up the rating for me. I will say that some things were a little unrealistic, um, but they kind of like tied together at the end to make sense why they were unrealistic. And I would forward. be interested to read more by this author just to see what else. This was a book. A Tale of Six, which I'll show here because I also read this one on ebook. This that. was a book written by an author that I, I like actually did cover. an author interview for on this channel. So I will link that in the description down below so you can check that out. This book was kind of a collection of short stories, but it was told mm. in a really interesting way. So the two main characters in this book, uh, they meet at the beginning of the book and then they go back to a house or a cabin. I think it's a cabin. They go back to a cabin and they're waiting out at the cabin for a certain reason, but they decide that while they're at the cabin, they're going to tell scary stories and see who can tell the scarier yeah, story. Yeah, that's a framed and narrative. And so it's a tale of six. So there's six different stories that they share back and forth. And all of them I thought were pretty like creepy stories. And I thought it was really cool how they did this and how they had like one underlying story with the six stories included in it. I thought it was really fun. Some of these stories actually reminded me a lot of Black Mirror episodes. And I love the show Black Mirror. I think it's like, I don't know, it's a super but chilling that, does show. Does that mean it's so technologically that was oriented? was like good and brought the rating up for me. I gave this a four out of five stars. 
because there were definitely parts where I was creeped out and it was relatively fast paced enough that I like flew through the whole thing. I read Seven Deadly Shadows and this book was a five out of five stars. Ooh. This was my shining star for the month of October. This is an arc that was sent to me by HarperCollins and it actually How came do you out get in arcs? January. I've never gotten an arc. So yeah, it came out quite a while ago and I was sleeping on this. I really should have picked this up earlier because this has been on my shelf since January of 2020. Actually, I think I had it before January. But like anyways, the cover, like the I was title. sleeping on this book. This book was fantastic. It was such a fun, dark fantasy book. I just had such a blast with it. So this one deals a lot with like kitsunes and like Japanese fantasy mythology. Um, lots of different like spirit elements come into play. I'm Japanese in this book, if you don't know. And there were just uh, the there was so much really cool like Japanese folklore in here that I was just having an amazing time learning about all these things while following along with the main character and their mission that they were on, which is like to save their family from a demon king. How cool is that? And it was a retelling of Seven Samurai. So like oh. the main character had to team up with seven death gods and that in itself Ooh. is so cool like i oh i i could not stop gushing about this book it was so much fun and i want to check this one like out little characters in there there's one little character in there my little oni chan i freaking love that character and the whole time i'm like rooting for oni chan i'm like yep yep and anytime they like came into I wanted to say screen. Anytime they came into a scene, I was just like, oh, yes, I love them. They're so friggin' adorable. And just, yeah. The Onichan is like a little cat creature. So obviously like the whole time I'm thinking of like my Uno and oh, it was just so cute. I just, I just love the little Onichan. I think it was like the perfect addition to this book and it just added for an extra like cutesy, adorable character. And it was perfect to have that character in this book since the entirety of this book is pretty intense. It starts off really quickly and just gets right into it. And it's action packed. There is little that you're sitting there thinking like, okay, why, like, is this part needed in the book? No, like the whole thing is a thrill ride. I just had so much fun with this book and I would honestly recommend this to anybody. I think it's fantastic. So yeah, don't sleep on this. Go pick up Seven Deadly Shadows. You I don't know what an Oni Chan is, but Chan is sort of a diminutive you give to like children or, or little cute things. Like when I was growing up, my little stuffed animal was called my doggy Chan. <laughs> and I was called something Chan, which I won't get into, but um, I'm interested in this book. This looks very interesting. Okay, well, that pretty much uh, gives a good overview of Eric of Break Even Books. It's interesting, he started this channel, it sounded like he was thinking that other people would, in his blog would maybe uh, be part of the channel, and obviously it's just really focused on him. I do think it's interesting that he started BookTube with an audience already built through his book blog, and it's apparent. He's just always been very personable and appealing, and it's like, oh, you just want this guy to be your friend. He just has that very open, earnest personality. So if you're not subscribed to Eric, you should definitely check him out. If you're not subscribed to me, you should definitely subscribe to me too. And give this video a thumbs up. And let me know in the comments if there's another booktuber you would like me to react to. So thank you for watching. That's all I have for now. And until next time, may all the books you read be blessed. Thank you.